Hello. Today, on to my 2012 335IS, I shall be bestowing the Fuelit FI 650HP low pressure fuel pump upgrade. The uh, fuel pump, which I did an overview video on, should be posted. Basically fits, uh, located underneath the right rear passenger seat. Um, but it, this installation also requires running some secondary power and a trigger. So the power and the trigger wire for the relay goes from the fuel pump into the battery compartment. And then also you have to run a trigger to a hob switch, which is a pressure activated switch that goes in the charge pipe. Uh, so up. So reading through the instructions, it requires talks about removing the uh, wheel, wheel liners on the front and rear. So preliminary actions, they recommend running the fuel tank as low as possible. I think uh, I'm indicating I have like 18 miles left. I'm like the one little notch. So about as low as I feel comfortable being able to drive it uh, here and back to a gas station after doing this. Um, so I'm gonna do that, move the seats as far forward as possible, give me room to be able to work in the back seat, uh, break the lug nuts loose on the both right wheels and then uh, lift the vehicle so when I start running the wires I can get in and uh, do that. So I've never done this before, we'll be learning together. Um, it's definitely needed. I've gone full bolt on with the back end flash and JB4 and I'm running out of fuel, uh, especially higher RPMs, uh, higher in the RPM range in third and fourth gear. So in fourth is the low pressure, the low fuel pump pressure is dropping uh, into the low 40s and it's causing a couple of errors. So anyway, uh, getting ready to get going on breaking some stuff loose and doing some other preliminary tasks and uh, I'll video as we go. One other thing to remove when setting up to do this job is underneath the car where you have this lower cover running along just underneath the kick panel. There are these uh, plastic retaining screws um, I believe it's a Torx fitting, but remove those along the length of the car because once you know, I use a quick jack, but once you it might not be a problem with regular jacks, but once you have the car elevated, then you go to remove the other ones to run the trigger wire up to the front of the uh, engine compartment. Since I couldn't get some of these off due to the jack being in the way, I ended up just having to flap this thing down and reach up in there to run those wires and zip ties to secure it because you run it along the uh battery cable that comes out of the battery, battery compartment. It kind of goes in over the subframe in there and then comes back this way and then runs, you know, from underneath the body all the way up to the front and then eventually up through a hole into the baggage compartment. So remove that, those screws for that lower cover so when the car is lifted, you can get that whole cover down and make it a lot easier. Okay, so we have the uh, car lifted, loosened up the lug nuts on the right side wheels for later when we run the power wires. Got seats all the way forward. I'm starting to disconnect the battery and you're gonna end up actually having to take the battery out for uh, to run the wires into the little battery compartment. Um, the other thing is since it, I always end up putting a rag over the latch so that this thing can't close on you. So the back seats basically just have some clips on the front. Here is the access of the low pressure fuel pump right here. So we're gonna need four bolts, they look like tens. Right, so I want to 
vacuum this out. smell the fuel vapor. Alright, so with that being done, the top hat should stay up. Let me bite my hands a little bit. There's numerous hoses and things attached to the bottom. And I can already see fuel. So even with as low as I ran it, it's definitely sitting in gas. Right. This right here is the clip that needs to come out. So if I want to go get my pick, and it's barbed inward and outward. Get my pick and work, work on getting that off next. All right, for fear of damnation, I think I kind of got the trick on this. So, <laughs> I don't think I just did that. You want to make sure this vent hose is as far up as possible, i.e., you don't want it pressing, you know, pulling away from the top half. You want to Squeeze it up as high as possible, and then you kind of have to try to gently get one. As soon as one goes to a, a click too far, the other side is not going to come loose. It engages really well. So like if you get that one to pop all the way through, the other one's not going to go. So you got to kind of... Get one barely started and then push the other one. And then you can remove the clip from the back, theoretically. Well, should be able to. And get a knee up in it. So, it's because it has these barbs on both sides, outside and inside. So, that's that. That over on the gas smelling bag. Remove the vent hose. The top hat starts to slide up. Release these clips. Push in. Alright, that comes out. Now, oh, there's a ground wire too. No, that's just an attachment. Okay, so. 
there's a tethered little tether line that connects from the top of the top hat here. Piece of plastic here to set fuel y type stuff on. Great, it's already leaking fuel. Okay, so I got the uh, fuel wiped up and clean. So I'd recommend from the beginning, I had the plastic over there for when I remove parts, but there's enough poured out of this vent and it kind of started getting on this foam part. Hopefully my uh, fast orange wipes got it up well enough. So what we have now, on the inside, you have the fuel supply line coming out of the top of the pump. You have two vent lines. So there's a green button on the side of that fuel supply line that needs to be pushed in for that to come off. And then these two uh, vent lines, or it's a return lines actually, pop off and then this pump assembly comes out. So I want to do that with the supply line disconnected. So it was sitting at an inclination like this. I rotated it this way. Use a screwdriver between the housing and the button. Twisted with one hand to push a button and pulled up with the other. That came out. So now I just have these little return lines disconnected. And we should be ready to lift this bad boy out the way. Now, you gotta rotate it about the fuel level sending unit as you pull it out. It's just full of gas too. So I'm dumping the gas into the tank. Okay. With that being done, lifting, and there it is. Putting on the plastic, and the stock low pressure fuel pump is out. Okay, here's the uh, stock fuel pump assembly, low pressure fuel pump assembly next to the fuel at one. So it's basically the stock low fuel, low pr fuel pressure pump assembly, but they use where the uh, fuel supply hose went on, comes over into the secondary pump. So we'll attach the fuel supply line here. You have the two return lines that are gonna clip in just like they did before. And the only other difference is are going to be with the top hat assembly it has the added terminals for the secondary pump being this is already kind of a tight fit getting the fuel level sending unit through I imagine I'm going to have to put the secondary in first Slide this on top of it, hook everything up. Going to have to see if I can leave as much as this connected so I don't have to reconnect it. This is actually pretty tight right here. So I might actually have to disconnect some of the electrical. We'll see if I can squeeze it all in there and get all these things hooked back up. I'm going to use the new PETA clip 
because the other one, even though it's, I didn't break it, is a little beaten up. And reinstalling this, so let's go put it in. Since I just enjoy doing things numerous times to get good at them, it's kind of a thing. I noticed when I was uh, first got on with the electrical aspect, I noticed this in the bag that the uh, PETA clip bag, the new PETA clip came with. And I noticed that there's a filter already in the stock low pressure fuel pump housing. And I was like, oh, well, maybe it's a spare one. Put it all back together and didn't until I went up and took a break and my brain shifted back on to thinking mode rather than doing mode. The secondary pump needs a filter too. So good thing I didn't go ahead and button everything up. I'm getting ready to do the electrical part, but looks and now that I've taken it back off, which of course doing it the second time was a lot easier pulling all the stuff out. I actually should have just recorded that one and made that the clip. But anyway, I'm gonna pull this rubber cap off and put this filter on so that it filters fuel the way it's supposed to and that it'll work because I'd have been a little confused when I didn't get any uh, added fuel at high boost and end up burning up my pump or something. So I'm gonna throw that on throw all this back in the tank and probably that's the only thing I overlooked. Filter for a secondary pump as we're supposed to. 